The majority of the young people brought in by Stay Safe are between 10 and 16 years of age. Many of them have been drinking. But although Stay Safe has the power to take youngsters into care, they have yet to do so. Mystery man, Jane. What's your Jane? Have you got anything else that you get up to just stand around the streets or? Just on our feet. What age are you? 17. Okay, so do you wear? No. Did you go to school? Yeah. What was that like? Sure. Did you actually attend or bunk off? I did, I attended until I started fighting with them. What was that over? Dropping on the screen. Police say that antisocial behaviour is down 21% in stay safe areas and the programme is attracting national attention. Jimmy Clark is the senior social worker on the project. It's inappropriate for a child to be walking through a park drunk. It's inappropriate for a child to be running across the road without adult authority. It's inappropriate for a child to be walking down the road with a knife and no one saying, that's stupid before you go out. But this is a low level way of social service and the police, youth offending service saying, we care enough to say, this is inappropriate, you're unsafe, stop it. And sometimes young people don't get that instant consequence which stops them escalating the behaviour up towards antisocial behaviour, criminality and gang crime. What about the parents who say, you know, it's, it's my child, I'm entitled to bring it up and nurture it in the way that I see fit and it's none of your business? One parent came to us and said, why have you picked up my nine and ten year old for running across the road? And one of the police officers said, well, would you rather me turn up with your child in a box? Many of these young boys particularly resent authority. They don't seem to have had much authority in their lives. Mm -hmm. How do you go about instilling, instilling in them some kind of respect for authority? For those kids who escalate toward gun and gang crime, I think what you've got to look at is what is the mother and father acted as role models for? And if your mother and father is a drug um, or alcohol misuser, you'd never ever build up a model of adult authority being useful to you. That's why nowadays I think you see more and more violence by kids towards adults, because some of these kids never understood what do adults bring to the table, apart from drug misuse, alcohol misuse, you or know, abuse. or abuse, exactly. This is Grafton Street, Liverpool 8, and in the early hours of June 19th, 2004, it was the scene of a murder that shocked the city. A young lad was getting out of his car when he was shot twice at point-blank range with a sawn-off shotgun by a masked man. The boy, Liam Kelly, was just 16 years old and the youngest victim of gun crime the city had ever seen. Liam had come here over a disputed debt of just £200. A 19-year-old is serving 23 years for his murder. Another suspect has never been traced. And as ever in these cases, the repercussions go on. Woman older head hand. When Liam Kelly was buried, he left behind four siblings and a mother who's still grieving his loss. Oh, Liam was boyish. He was a proper boy. Um, he was up to all kinds, mischief. People have said in the court case that the dispute was over £200. Yeah, Liam, it was Liam's coming up to Liam's birthday and I do say for the kids' birthdays. And Liam asked me if he can have some of the money to go and buy clothes, so I gave him £200 out of his birthday money, not knowing he was going to lend it to Anthony Campbell. Um, time went on, Anthony never paid him. Um, apparently this court year that Ian Campbell had come into some money, um, it was time for him to pay up. He went paying up, an argument came. Um, Liam went out the house, um, to the mum's house, to front Campbell. Campbell went in, I was of anger. Liam walked away, picked up a bike and just flew it backwards. You know, that way, that way, meant to go through the window. And we meant to, my, my son was killed through a bike, going through the window, you know. He was brutally killed. He was brutally killed, Liam, for a bike. So have you had any contact, um, 
with this person's family? Not long after Liam was murdered, I come face to face with the mum. Um, and I'm sorry I ever let her go that day. But I think next time I come face to face with that woman, I will not be held responsible for my actions. And I will not be held responsible. Another time, um, I got a call as she was in Neto. Not here, that auntie was in Neto. And I went what, to plead the, 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 Anthony Campbell's auntie. The guy that killed your killed son? Killed Liam. The auntie was in? In Neto. And I got a call and I went to plead with her. Please tell him to plead guilty, he did kill my son. Um, but that didn't happen. I just seen red. I had busted her and she ended up in the freezer. <sighs> what, so you headbutted her and she ended up in the freezer inside the supermarket? She fell into the freezer. Liam's sister drew a picture about Liam's death. Yeah, when she was nine. When she was nine. About, about what happened to Liam, isn't it, yeah. really? Yeah. Can I have a look at it? Yeah. Has she talked to you much about her brother? No. No, this is her expression. She doesn't this talk about how she you. expresses. You're saying you like to see this as a poster, Mary? Yeah, I like to be on billboards. Um, but I know the council, the poor city council, won't be put on that up because of capital culture. But the only culture we got here is gun and drug culture. We've got nothing else here. How often do you think about Liam? <sighs> Every day. I wake up in the middle of the night, Liam's on my mind. You know, I could be sitting here watching television. I'm not watching television. He's constantly there and there, Ross. No. So much. In part four, my brief meeting with the Crocky crew. During my time in Liverpool, I've been trying to get hold of the infamous Croxteth crew, one half of the city's most intense gang rivalry. Now, I'd finally got the break I'd been looking for. You tell me what it's like living around here? Rough. Rough? Yeah. Good. Good? Yeah, it's like a ghost town after 10. Like a ghost town after yeah. 10? It's a nice yeah. society. <laughs> Why is that? Like it like that, it's just nice. Come down, stay for a bit. Yeah. I've been to other places. This place here, it's on Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard. Well, how violent is it then? Violent. Can you give me any examples of how violent it is to live around here? Do people have guns? Obviously. How easy is it to get a gun around here then? Depends who you are. Yeah, depending. Depending on what you're after. Mm -hmm. So what shotguns easy to get in the same nine mil pistol? Yeah. But can you hire guns, yeah? No. no. One no, of them. That's bullshit. Yeah. That's bullshit, yeah? yeah. No one hires no, no one else yeah. no one. Because no if no someone one. has a gun with a knock, they get back, are they? Simple. Right. They get robbed Just for see it. if you use it, you've got to buy it anyway. You've got to buy it, yeah? To use it. Use it. If you guys have left school now, do you have jobs? No. How easy is it to get a job around here? Not easy, not easy, I don't. I don't go around in a fucking zone, because it's in Norris Green. <laughs> Talking in Norris Green, what do you think about the people from there? Shit, oh, man. They're all dead, dogs. They haven't got beefers. They're dogs in a What? What's the reason? Why do you feel like that about them? Because <laughs> they're all rapists. 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 <laughs> Isn't it true that a lot of you went to the same school, yeah? <laughs> so you know each other by sight, yeah? <laughs> so what happens if one of them comes across the border, as it were? Get dealt with something. They get dealt with? Yeah. How do you mean? What do you mean by that? <laughs> what do you think of me? <laughs> They've got a name because of us. It's not it's not because you all got shot down there. That's right. They're all scarred for life. <laughs> but you can you tell me what's the what's the beef about them? Is it a specific incident that made that happen? Prepared to tell you. You're not prepared to tell us? No. For an outsider, which I know I am, if I looked at you guys and I looked at them because of the clothes that you wear, it'd be very difficult for anyone to tell you apart. 